Where? Worst gig ever time, Tom. Oh, another bonus. Peanut butter jelly jam. Peanut butter jelly. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> peanut butter and jam, you bastards. It's peanut butter and jam. Peanut butter and jam, yeah. And, and, and like, you know, I got to tell you, Tom, I'm not a peanut butter fan. I'll but take... see peanut butter and jam, I'll take that. I'll take that. I, I, I give it a go once. Wasn't hectic. Wasn't hectic. I live without it, Jer. I live without it. But you know what? I won't live it out. I won't, <laughs> I won't live it out keeping our fans up to date and in the know of what's happening because of course we do have seasons we had a meeting lads we even had a meeting last week we had a meeting and we wrote we wrote a thing down it's definitely been written down we've been conversing back and forth and it's not that we're felt acting odd, Tom. i know i felt dirty but look it does have to be done. if we have any respect for these people we have to fucking keep it up Here's the thing. Oh yeah, no, look, no, no. Do you know what I was thinking there the other day, Tom? Mm. I, I, I got into a, I got into a mindset, and I was like, oh shit, this is exactly why there was such a long stretch from three to four. I got real fucking lazy from season four to th- season three to season four. I was like, I got real lazy, and I could feel it creeping into me. I was like, oh god, I could just I could let this sit for another year and a half and just bang out bonus episodes every Thursday because I get to fucking chat to some of my favorite comedians and in general some of my favorite people in the world. And I said, no, nope, no, nope, keep at it. Keep the keep the keep the fires burning. And season six is shaping up real nice. We're gonna have it to you guys real soon, unless you fucking piss us off. In which case, you can wait. Yeah, but I think that people are being very nice about it. I briefly we have explained that it's absolutely going to be nothing like we've done before. It's going to be a change attack. But you look at you're going to like it. Yeah, but it'll it'll have us. Don't worry. But in the meantime, yeah. we haven't turned our back you're on them completely. Like it. We haven't turned our back on them no. completely. We, and 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 hey. Quit giving out. We're giving you bonus episodes every fucking week. Don't you know? With one of our absolute favorite segments of the Tom and Cherry show, which was my worst gig ever, which all you people just love to hear of us comedians crashing, burning, and twisting in the wind. Well, this week is no different. We are going to treat you to one of the finest joke writers in the country, in the shape of Mr. Carl Spain. Carl lets it rip here. I thought we'd never get him off the line. I thought we'd never get him off the line. I was very excited, and Carl does have a few worst uh, gigs ever. We were, I was, I was, I was about to rename the show the Tom and Jerry and Carl show. He went on so much, <laughs> but like, it's not that he rabbited on. He had some good stuff, and as you're about to hear now, he's got a couple of worst gig ever that you wouldn't, uh, uh, yeah, you wouldn't take his trouble, Tom. You certainly wouldn't. So sit back, everybody, enjoy the fantastic Carl Spain. Um, well, I'll tell you about two gigs first off, see how long that takes. And both gigs have something in common in that I didn't realize how bad they were till some time afterwards. Oh, Jesus Christ. How slow burn worse gigs, eh? Well, the other thing they have in common is I don't really think they were my fault. That <laughs> <laughs> that's not, I'll tell you the stories. That's not being arrogant. It's like the first one, and it's that thing of. Um, oh, I've learned to when you introduce someone, if you know, you know, I've given you know, not I people say, Oh, you give negative introductions, but they're jokes, they're like you know, it's gentle roasts on someone or slagging someone. And I think that lets for, wh- when it works properly, which I think is most of the time, it lets the audience know, Oh, they're friendly, that's a bit of crack, he's having a laugh, they're having a laugh with each other. Yeah, who likes him? If we liked the first guy, we should like this guy because they're friends. So, I, I that's the way. I, that's my thing. So, but um, sometimes someone can do something that will fuck you up, basically. <laughs> and a guy I really like did something once, and it wasn't his fault either. I was in Bristol Jesters, which I don't know if you ever did the club. Yeah. Was, they changed the room. So if you were in the old room, which was like a long room, like a tunnel room almost, and it used to be brilliant. And on a Wednesday night, it was all students. So pretty much rows and rows of students they were clever. They got everything, you know, and it was a good atmosphere. It was just, a, it was always a nice gig. I always had fun there and I did it a lot. And one night, it was actually my birthday, which makes it, I don't know, sad or um, certainly poignant. Um, so I was g- getting ready to go on and Mark Oliver was the host. I don't know if you've met Mark. He does loads of TV warm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great guy. Great with a crowd. I love watching him because he's literally, he doesn't plan it. It's not like, Here's a bit of chat and here's a joke. The, the other comedians have heard me doing 40 times that I'm making look spontaneous. He'd go off some chats. 
And he just goes into this moment of, hey, can you do this? And he does a cartwheel across the stage. And everyone was like, oh, because he's a small, little bit pudgy. They weren't expecting, you know, to do a cartwheel, which is <laughs> Inversion. <laughs> yeah, I did a great cartwheel with dexterity. So he'd been chatting. The way the room was, it was so it's a big, long line of people, or, you know, rows of people. But at the very front, there was a table. And he'd been chatting to them a bit and found out that the girl, one of the girls at the table, she had started work with these people on Monday. And this was Wednesday. So this was, they're getting to know, she just started working with them and she's getting to know them. They've gone out on the Wednesday, they're having a few drinks and you could see they're all getting on. So they said to her, so after Mark did the cartwheel, she goes, I can do a cartwheel. Now I'm oh. 20 feet away going, for fuck's sake. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. He literally yeah. done the, the classic of, anyway, I'll bring your headliner on, you know, and I know myself, I've done it, but it's that thing of something happens and you just look across through and you know the fucking act is pissed off going, Jesus Christ, will you just get me on? You know, it's you're primed, you're ready, you don't want to... Yeah. She goes, can you do... So you can do a cartwheel? And she goes, yes, I can. So she got up and Mark looked at me and I was like, in my head, going, that's okay, you know, whatever. This is a bit of fun, whatever. So she gets up, does the cartwheel and as she comes back up her boobs fly out <laughs> <of the top. laughs> so she's she, she's of the age of someone who's left college so they're a whole room of students and it's literally she dumped in very much a ta-da move at the end <laughs> so it's kind of ta-da and her boobs just boom fly out of the top mark goes oh my god the whole room goes what the fuck? And she's there with her workmates. Now, I feel it took four hours for him to calm the room. You know, it took him a couple of minutes, like, but they just didn't shut up. Like, right. were, everyone in the room is going, oh my God, oh my, because we've all experienced this. Would you blame them? Like, you could. Yeah, of course. It's one of those, it just happened. She's still at the front and her work colleagues are going, whatever, I can't remember her name now. It was years ago, gone. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Carol, that was not going to be her name when she went back to work, I can tell you after that. Yeah, she had a, of course, she had a new of name. Course. Oh, so you knew if you worked with her going, oh, Jay's there, Sharon, can you do uh, a you know, <laughs> cartwheel? Shut up, shut up. Or cartwheel, Catherine, huh? Come on. But I never got the room. Like, I was literally How there. could you? Yeah, but it was there trying to chat them. And they just, they literally have just seen something they're going to be telling people for years. Oh, Jay's yeah. the You cannot follow now. spontaneous tips. Yeah. It's not... They've probably added bits to the story. I've met Mark. The funny thing is I've met Mark so many times and I've never stopped and gone, what's your memory of that night? And now I know next time I will. Um, and it, But it was just that thing of, I went, I am fucked here. And I went on, I told him it was my birthday. I wasn't expecting to see a pair of boobs. <laughs> um, it was just one of those things. But you couldn't. They literally were, go they were just talking amongst themselves of what have we just seen? So I did a yeah. couple of jokes on it and tried to go, but I'm meant to do like 30, 35 minutes. And I was doing the material, but I knew I never had them. Yeah. I never got them. And it was just one of those, you're going, oh, come on. Like, you know, but it just, the mo the night had happened in that moment, literally yeah. before it took yeah. the stage. Never happened. I left that night and I was going, oh, it wasn't my fault. Fuck it. What can I do? But the following night, I think it was because I was so frustrated with the audience on the Wednesday. I ripped, I like had a really good gig. Now ripped in, you know, totally focused. And it's one of those, you know, if everything's set up, you're going yeah. to have a good gig. You're there. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say that. And this is going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And I ripped it. I would say at that point, the best gig I'd ever done in that club, in you know, in Jester's. Delighted with myself going, fine, great. And I haven't really blamed myself for the night before until I was walking out and the bouncer goes to me, that was brilliant. That was so funny. You were brilliant. Like literally boom, but you know, bullet points, yeah. everything you want to hear. And I knew, like I knew the guys to say hello to, they'd never said anything. You know, they weren't guys for compliments. And I was like, thanks. I can't remember his name. Thanks a million. Really appreciate that. And he goes, made up for last night. <laughs> I went home. Well, back to a, a shit B&B, &B, I should say. 
devastated. And I was, I was so annoyed because I just had a great gig. But the bad gig from the night before the kicked stink. in. The stink of that fucking later. gig. Oh, that, that, that's that's like a kick in the balls of a gig where you know like oh that wasn't sore and then like a second later like yeah, <laughs> it just it, fucking grows on you it's, it's one of those things I've gone do you remember you did that gig in Vicar Street I go yeah do you remember there was a cuff of it your joke killed my granddad <laughs> <laughs> it was that kind of finding out afterwards something terrible but I remember just I, like I remember just like I went from I wasn't euphoric but I was in great form I went yeah I mean like you know it's like not that you did something bad, like you know, because it was it was one of the, out of my control. Yeah. But um, I thought, oh, there's nothing, like, you know. But I remember going back, and I was, but it, I remember the the Friday night then coming back, and I was like, oh, well, I'm not talking to him after the gig, no matter how well I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh Jesus, you're not you're not getting your Thursday night anymore. But the the one the one that took, I this 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 story I've told people is that people love this story and there's there's a famous name in it somewhere in the middle as well um so it was a limerick race course where i got the second vax there the other day so jesus um <laughs> we, we almost <laughs> we almost did an outdoor gig last year <laughs> exactly and the funny okay. thing, I think, time is a flat circle <laughs> yeah i think it was almost the anniversary i think that came up in my facebook memory <laughs> the day it was gone out there and um i was saying to rachel my girlfriend i'm going out to the race course and she goes Oh, that's where you had that shit gig that time. Oh, I mean, oh she's like your yeah. bouncer. She's your fucking yeah. bouncer, just dredging oh, it up. She's a killer. She's a killer. I probably, I was probably smiling around the eyes, and she said, "I'll knock that out." Of you. <laughs> um, I was. There's a few. There's a few elements in this story now. I was asked to do. It, it was a benefit gig. There was two jockeys who would had accidents. I don't know. I'm not a ra- follow race. If you follow horse racing, you might have known them. One had broken, he was paralyzed from the neck down and the other had broken his back. So there was this big fundraiser at Limerick Racecourse and loads of things, loads of things were happening. And Mick Dolan, you know, from Dolan's and Limerick, mm-hmm. Dolan's Warehouse, asked me, will you do some comedy at it? And it, because it's Mick, I said, of course. And I arrive out, there was a big lunch beforehand. There's loads of people coming in. Niall Quinn was there, Steve Bruce. I think JP McManus was definitely there for a while possibly there you know so there's lots of different heads and i don't know if you've been in you know your typical race course function room it's massive it's actually about four function rooms together so we're sitting down for lunch and there's a guy up and i'm going they're going that's where you'll be performing someone oh you must meet whoever's in charge and the guy's up talking into the mic telling people different things and i went this is not going to work yeah this gig is gone and you said like, benefit carla we both knew that wasn't going to work yeah but, yeah, yeah. So, it was a charity gig, but the mic isn't the mic isn't the, the, the sound isn't good for the, isn't good enough for the room. And I said to Mick, I'm having my lunch. I'm not on for two hours. I said, you know, I'm going to die on my arse up there. Because, and he said, like, no, no, you'd be grand. I said, Mick, it's not I don't it's not a lack of confidence in myself. <laughs> it goes, <laughs> it's gone. Right? I'm not the problem yeah. here, Mick. Yeah. But it was just that thing of Danny from the Coronas was on singing and no one was listening. Ah, oh, Jesus. You know, he was playing songs. He was on before and meant to be on after me, which he did. And he's playing and singing and there's no one. And I'm not, I'm not the farthest away part. I'm halfway away from him. You know, I'm, I'm at a prominent table. Come on, I'm performing. <laughs> um, but I was at a good table and I'm looking at Danny and he's singing his heart out with the guitar into the mic. Oh, and he can't get them with the thing of mic. So I know it's going to be horrendous I and know you're watching it from two hours out holy two Christ. hours and watching bits and pieces the guy's going and I'm like oh my god but the acoustically thing that, like, this, this gig is lost already yeah, but the, the thing that made me so scared and now this is a very inappropriate joke it's not a, it, it was more the thought I'm trying to you know any room you do you look at the room and you'll try and think what can I use? What can I say? Oh, look at that window. That looks out to something. Oh, look at that counter there. Oh, look, the staff for blah, blah, blah. And you're always looking around. There's something, you just take it all in and I'll use it at some point during the gig. But they had the two names of the lads on this pinky purple backdrop hanging from the, from the wall. So it was the lads' two names. And it looked like, I, I said to Mick, it makes it look like they're actually a couple rather than the two, and I said, you know, Jesus, almost like Brokeback Mountain. And I <laughs> said, Brokeback Mountain, 
to make. And the two of us looked at each other and I was like, Jesus, I'm not like, I wasn't joking. It wasn't a joke I'd made. It was literally, you know, words tripped out of your head. Yeah. And Mick was like, oh, Jesus, Mick, I'm not fucking going on stage saying that. <laughs> but then, of course, it's in the back of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Don't push the red button, girl. Do not push the red button. So that was, you know, knowing you're going to have a terrible time and um, then having the thing of, oh, my God, if you said that, you would die. They yeah. would, like, there was someone, there's family there, there's close yeah. friends. I don't know if the guys themselves were there. I didn't see them, but I was like, oh, my, like, it's literally, what's the worst thing you could say? And I... And there it is. Of, I don't know, I didn't say it out loud. And I was like, oh, my God. I remember Mick's face of, gee, like, <laughs> it's like, Mick, Mick Dolan brought him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so even Mick... By fucking osmosis, uh, by by association, is even fucking famous. He's going to get at this stage. Yeah, he would have been frightened by it. I went up to do the, the and there was that. There was a bit at the start where I just went right. I'm going to try and get them, but I so I started did a couple of jokes and I looked over and I remember Steve Bruce and Niall Quinn laughed, and I was delighted. I could see them. They were in you know prominent table. I could see them laughing, and then just the noise rose again. You know, right. they kind of stopped and listened and the noise rose again. And I went, oh, I'm buried here. And at one point, I, you know, I was about five minutes in. I went, oh, I've just been told there's a car on fire outside and the registration <laughs> plate is. And the whole room went silent. And I went, so you can fucking hear me when I say <laughs> <laughs> got a Got a huge laugh, a bit of an applause, but it was just a nightmare. Now, the follow on from that gig wasn't 24 hours later. It was, I think, about 16 months later, something like a good while later when I'm at the electric picnic and I'm walking down behind the comedy stage. We all know, you know, the little pathway there. And this woman comes over to me and stops me and goes, Carl. And she was a lovely woman and, you know, a little bit older than me and goes, Carl, I saw one of your gigs last year. And in my head, I go, well, whatever year it was, was a pretty good year. So, <laughs> I think she pretty much nailed be talking it. about that fucking... I think I pretty much nailed it most nights. Um, which, which night I'm about to get the compliment for here. And she goes, I saw you at Limerick Racecourse. I used to be a jockey and I was down. And I, when she said Limerick Racecourse, I still didn't... It still did, The penny didn't drop. Yeah. I just went... And then I went... Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and the girl, sorry, the woman in question was Ashling B's mother. What? So she was a former jockey. Yeah. So she was at um, the electric picnic because Ashling was there. So um, she was absent. Now, Ashling's mother was lovely, was telling me she was at the gig and she goes, oh, I felt for you that day. It was really tough. I went, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was, you know, it wasn't my best night. And, you know, I didn't tell her of what I nearly said. Because <laughs> she probably got people to kill me. But um, she, 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 uh, she told me, oh, it's terrible. Oh, he says, oh, you were up against it. Well, all the, all the, saying all the right yeah. things. But, you know, you just gone. And I was like, oh, God. I, 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 I knew there was a, like a function room or whatever, four function rooms full of people. But I hoped I'd never meet them again. You know, yeah, of course. So, yeah. 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 You know, I felt like I was in a YouTube video, you know, and someone went, oh, you're the guy from that. You know, you're the guy yeah, who yeah. did that. And I said it to Ashley later. Ashley, I was chatting to Ashley. She goes, oh, I met your mother. And she goes, oh, I said, she's lovely. And she goes, yeah. She says, oh, she was at a gig I did. And she goes, oh, she told you. And I went, <laughs> she told me she was at the gig. And I went, why? What did she not tell you? And she went, oh, Ashley's mother rang Ashleen and said, don't do comedy. <laughs> because I've just seen something horrific happen. So Ashleen was laughing about it and I was laughing about it, but like her mother was so concerned about, because I think Ashley, well, Ashley would have been relatively new into the comedy. She would have been doing gigs in England and stuff like that, you know, but she had been an actor and she'd done other stuff. But the, the comedy had, was starting to take off her at this stage. But obviously, whatever, 14, 16 months previous, her mother sees me and goes, oh, Jesus, this is what Ashley is trying to get herself into. <laughs> but Ashley was telling me, and now Ashley might have been exaggerating slightly, but her mother going, oh, my God, oh, my God, don't do comedy. 
like literally trying to persuade her to stop doing it because of the gig she saw me happen. And I'm, possibly I've, I've seen her, it in the crystal pool. Yeah. The irony so, that her mother was a jockey and when you're at a benefit for how dangerous fucking being a jockey is. <laughs> yeah, she goes, yeah. And she still, yeah. she still figured what that, what that man just did is up, yeah. is, is up there you, with you fucking wanna, fire jumping. Yeah, exactly. You want to fucking chime back with that, Carla. By the way, Mrs. B, that jockey now is fucking fear <laughs> dangerous from what <laughs> I've learned. She probably didn't. T- she probably thought Ashley had the option to be a jockey. I don't think she thought I had. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Carl, would you not think of being a jockey? Going, yeah, what do you think? Should I carry the horse? But I remember that. I remember Ashley and going, oh, I wouldn't have said it to you. But she took great joy in telling me once the door was open. Of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Mammy. <laughs> And how did yeah. you, how did the rest of uh, did you have to gig after that in Electric Picnic? I can't remember. It was fine, but it was literally that that gig. I remember that gig because you know there's times when um, I was saying to someone, you you'll have rough gigs, and it was my thing at the start. I never turned down a gig. Of course, yes, yeah. I was off. If someone said, "Can you go and stand on the street as people walk past, shout at them?" Like I did a gig on. Um, this is probably would be classed as the worst gigs ever. It was the first anniversary of my mother dying and my father drove me to Carlo IT and the room they were meant to have the gig on, they couldn't. So they, I, they stood me on the table tennis table in the middle of the canteen and gave me a mic that cut out every 10, 15 seconds. Oh, fucking so I'm like going, hey, how are you doing? Carlo. Anyway, I'm, you know what? Such a thing, <laughs> Got it. and I'm like going, and there's a couple of people just looking, going, "What are you what doing?" The like, fuck? Very much, like, what are you doing? Look on their face. Um, they, um, yeah, my father's seen me twice. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, the, the funniest thing about that day is we were sitting in the canteen waiting to go on. I'm going, this is, you know, this is again pointless doing this. This isn't going to work. They're not here for. They're here for their lunch, whatever. But we found the phones. This is 2004, 20 to September, because I can't remember the date. And it was one of those fancy phones around then. Do you remember there was kind of slightly flippy ones? Yes. So yeah. It suddenly became, and it was, I just picked up, we sat down and it was a paper and I moved the paper and it was one of those phones on the thing. So I went, oh, how am I going to find who owns the phone? And I didn't want to hold, put it in. So I looked, I, I, I scrolled for the the phone book and it was looking for ma'am or dad in the phone yes. book to ring them and say, look, I've just found this phone. Whose is it? I'll hand it in. And will you tell them it's in such a place? And I remember opening up the phone book, the, uh, you know, the phone book with all the names and a had, it was like, whatever, Alan something, blah, blah. And then like the third or fourth name was asshole. And I went, it's a girl's phone. <laughs> <laughs> And her ex is, is still in the phone. But there was no mom or dad. But I saw Joe Rooney's name. And I went, oh, Joe Rooney. And then I checked with my phone. It wasn't comedian Joe Rooney. Right, yeah, yeah. And then I got a, the phone, that phone got a text. Where are you? And I just said, look, I don't know. I just found this phone. Um, I'm down. And this girl came down and I said, is your friend? He goes, yeah, will you give it back to her? Blah, blah, blah. But um, I felt like the hero. But I, I remember laughing at the asshole made me laugh so much. <laughs> But um, yeah, is, this, is those... this way you're still there with your mic with the mic in your hand? No, no, no. That was, that was after the gig. I think I sat down and just for a minute gone, what? But it was, yeah, it was it was what it was a gig that couldn't work. It was one of those. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, I think so, we've had a couple like them as well, Tom. Sometimes yeah, you, the, the, you never the, feel you, it, the IT of it kind of rings a bell with me. All right. Yeah, it's the frustration of it because you're just going, oh, like if you you know if we'd had the room, but then I'm going. Would like it was one of those gigs that was booked in for ages, and then yeah, oh, yeah. Went, oh, that's the anniversary of my mother's fucking day. Um, brilliant. And I was, I didn't drive at the time, so I my father said, Oh, I'll drive you. So we spent the day not talking about what day it was, and then having that. And I was like, Oh, god, and I was coming home. I said, Jesus, will we talk about ma'am dying? <laughs> <laughs> I need something to distract me from that gig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like what I normally would say, like you know, the three stories he gave us, is typically the, the the running, you know, the the theme is normally that gigs never do well. They, if they're going to go wrong, they're normally in venues where comedy has no business, i.e., a race course yeah, or a fucking yeah, yeah. college canteen. 
but you broke the mold as you know a good comedian and you still you know you got beaten in a comedy club albeit bristol and jesters can be rough come i've only ever done the weekend there and it was a disaster but you got beaten by tits that's well, Dave Chappelle couldn't follow a pair of spontaneous well, tits. You know what it made me think of, Tom, was that, you know, in the old days when you'd read about the working men's club where the comedian would come on after the stripper. Yeah. <laughs> that would never have worked for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, will, I will say, I don't think you were beaten by tits in that, in that first story, Carl. The other two, I, you have my every sympathy. They're fucking ghoulish. That first one, I reckon you could have pulled it back if you'd done like a Rodney Dangerfield style triple Lindy at the end. Oh, when are you ever going to get a fucking chance to do it again? Oh, I don't go full Bernard Manning. I think now in that situation, I would have made the whole show about it. Oh, yeah. I was trying to make them forget about it. I was going, but you couldn't do two cartwheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As Carl walks on topless himself, going, well, what's but the did, big but deal? But you couldn't do a cartwheel with me standing here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the golden thing even even with the even with the badness of it all you could as tom said you could have pulled it back if you walked on topless and go oh shit she stole me finish oh, that's nice <laughs> thanks for thanks for telling me that about fucking 18 years <laughs> yeah, well, you know what to do <laughs> well i mean anybody that's seen you in the in the real world will know just like as that bouncer said thank god because you you know you made up for that several times over after that so but Carl Spain, thank you very, very much. I mean, you're not one for promoting anything, but if you do get a chance to follow Carl, he's Carl King of O O V on yeah. Twitter. And he's very, very funny. He's very funny. We've all worked with Carl. And I have a funny feeling you're going to be a busy man come autumn. I have a funny I have, feeling. I have a few moments coming up, but if, just to put, put, plug something on TV, um, uh, Love Island. <laughs> 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 yeah, what about it, Carl? What tell us what about Love, Love Island and the European Championships? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I do you watch Love Island, yeah? No, no, uh, no. no I, I, I started watching it today. I, you know, I wasn't watching it, I went back and watched the first, just to see who's in it. And it made, made me laugh. I went, Oh, I have material about this, I've forgotten, which is the joy you get of watching all these young, very attractive people getting their hearts broken. Yeah, fucking get a taste of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these these 10 people walk into a house and you know, from now on, they're famous. Like, oh my God, there's, you know, Taniqua from Love Island. There's, you know, Brad with an F at the start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with his backstory or whatever. But, you know, it's always then when they get dumped, you go, yeah, fucking welcome. Fucking to lovely. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you, see, you never know, Carl. You see, maybe that's what people are saying when they're sitting in the audience because they're raging that you are a funny person. Then all of a sudden it dies on its hole and they're going, fucking lovely. Do, do you know what I'll put into context? Of, I'll tell you, th I know it's possibly against the rules, but I'll tell you of the biggest laughs I've ever seen while I've been on stage, right? Now, I built that up and you're going to go, oh no, look at this Boston. But wait, you've heard the story first. One of them was, I was in a petrol station the other day and a woman said, hello. And I, because of the mask, I'm going, hello. And I'm there. Oh, do I know this person? She goes, oh, you don't know me. You don't know me. And I went, but she goes, I was at that plane gig um, a couple of years back. And I went, oh yeah, I remember that gig. There's a hotel in Clane. It's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, I don't know. It's been built on in different ways. It's almost like, you know, it's a challenge to get in and out. But I was doing a story and there's a big high stool on the stage. And I sat onto the high stool and fell off the back of the stage. <laughs> so, the high stool, there was a, a, so I'm sitting on it. I think it was, it was a driving story or I'm doing something on the stool. And it was a high stool. And suddenly it just, I, oh, I disappeared. <laughs> Del boy, like. And because, because I had been talking to the front row, which was two nurses, and literally the backdrop was the new weddings there. So they had this kind of white netting. So it right. caught me and just lowered me. It was actually, <laughs> you know, it, you'd think I planned it. If it was videoed, you'd go, no, he had that look. It was, he, he had a fucking- He does that everywhere. He had a stunt expert set it up. Look, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Out. So it just perfectly caught the chair and lowered me. And everyone was like, huh? and I went, I'm okay. And the place fucking <laughs> erupted. <laughs> Like erupted once I wasn't dead or hurt, and I was, I'm still, you know, out of sight. Going, I see the two nurses haven't moved, and <laughs> I sat up and, like, you know, it's one of those. You, you, I remember seeing Dom Herrera in Kilkenny and just people falling off chairs. Now, it's not something you could ever plan or whatever, but yeah. just that they still had the image of me just go, oh, and gone. And, um, 
just they were like howling howling like and it was just um and I was going I was at the time I'm going yeah yeah about 18 years into my career and that's the biggest slap yeah <laughs> it's falling take, off it, take it take so, it take yeah. it and then another time, actually, I fell through, like the stage was set up. I, I stepped off. I didn't realize there was a gap and I was about to bring someone on. It wasn't quite a pair of tits, but I went, whoa, went down. And the audience erupted. It took me a couple of minutes. No, <laughs> on, blah, blah, blah. But the one I was doing a gig with Phil Nickel in um, in Mumbai and Phil was destroying the place. But I'd been on. We did it like doing four or five days. And Phil used to do a thing at the end. He'd flirt with some guy in the audience. Yeah. And he'd literally be going come on, we're going to do, you know, do this after the show. I'm going to finish early and then we're going to go and, you know, do things to each other. And, you know, you know, very funny doing it. But what he did when he went off stage, the MC comes back on and then Phil takes off his top and just sticks his head back through the curtain. Come on, Kumar, I'm waiting. <laughs> and the, place, the place howls laughing. And But I saw him do it the first night and I said, can I do it the second, you know, the next show? And I stick my, so... Phil is down like, and I've been on earlier. Come on, look, <laughs> I'm lubed or I'm ready. And I've never seen a room like just like, and it was, they were all Indians, like, but they were all like Bollywood stars. So like Shilpa Shetty was, I don't know if she there that night, but there was loads of like, like the, the staff used to get excited going, oh, so-and-so's in tonight, you know, cause it was comedy at the time. It was new and cool. So yeah. all the, the glitterati used to go. So it was a weird thing to be like club comics from the UK Irish <laughs> showing up to play to these, like literally the most beautiful audience you've ever seen. Like they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it was, it's the one time I've traveled and the gigs were local. I'm oh, sorry, the audience were locals. You know, normally you go, yeah, to they're Australian, expats, yeah. Great, Irish, whatever, but they were predominantly Indian. Apart from one that night, there was one, <laughs> there was one white guy sitting on his own and John Fothergill was the MC and said to him, what are you doing here? He says, oh, work. He says, oh, what do you do? And he goes, oh, I'm casting for Asian babes. <laughs> and um, so he's over and like trying to get girls. And I was, we were all like, what? You want to see the whole reaction? It was like, what? Like the, everyone in the room going, oh. And suddenly he gone, oh, I wonder if he, <laughs> if he noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember we're all going, are you really doing that now? Is that just a line? You go to a theater where someone will talk to you and go, oh, by the way, yeah, um, people, oh, girls could make loads of money. But I remember that, remember that look when, you know, I'm basically a tagline on Phil Nichols night and just looking at the room and just, again, people falling off chairs. It's So again, essentially what we're, we're picking out here is, Carl, you should have gone as a, you know, you maybe turned the corner into being like a props comedian slash fucking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, it's 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 one of those things. Topless has both worked for and against me. <laughs> <laughs> and that beautiful note, Carl. Brilliant stuff, Carl. Thanks, man. And I did perform for Asian Babes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, guys. When we said uh, comedians twisting in the wind, we literally have comedians twisting in the wind there. There you go. The mighty Carl Spain. I know. I know. You thought there was only going to be one. He left us with a butch. Fair play to Carl. Thank you very much. Well, you know the crack. Jory and the gang we just want you to follow us on our socials yeah. and all the rest of it and there's yeah, a we want to see those numbers go we want to see those numbers go up Twitter Instagram you'll find us at Tom and Jerry show Jerry with a G uh, you know if the avatars look vaguely like you imagine uh, we look upon the sound of our voice it's probably us I can't imagine that there's any other Tom and Jerry's out there that have uh, you know an English tea appreciation podcast <laughs> that you're going to accidentally fucking saunter into. It's us. It's me. It's Tom. It's Tom and Jerry. We're going to rock and roll. The uh, socials are all good. We're going to kick it off with a few more bits and pieces as we build up to season six. So you don't want to miss out on that. Plus, you get to hear every week ahead of time who Thursday's bonus episode guest is going to be. So follow us, for fuck's sake. It's the handiest thing to do because sometimes it doesn't pop up in your subscription feed handiest thing to do is follow us on one of those platforms you will find out who's coming up next and then latest in the new season of the Tom and Jerry show and as simple as that one more thing is to leave a like comment and sub share on whatever platform you can whether it be Spotify or I think it's Acast and Apple are the only ones you can actually leave a comment leave a comment because that helps us and of course five stars with a comment 
and that helps everybody else find it through the algorithm some which way nothing that we're going yeah. to do with it Al, but... that algorithm's fucking us over big time so Ooh. we need your five star reviews to help us out here exactly we don't I wish we could just coast by on quality alone we'd be well up there but that algorithm's keeping us down the problem is Jerry we don't uh, we're not agony ants and we don't take people's problems and talk also we don't talk retro in the way of wasn't it guess when we did the leave insert we need to do more of that stuff if we well, want to come up. Yeah, with that. you know, do you know what it is, Tom? Season six. How gas was my leaving search? Um... <laughs> <laughs> so episode one, Matt's paper one. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Other, other, other than that, thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Tom and Jerry Show. We will be back real soon with season six. We're not making this shit up. Uh, but we will be back definitely next Thursday with another worst gig ever episode. What do you think about that, Tom? I love it. Right. Let's hit the bricks. Good luck and thanks, everyone. Good luck now.